Hello and thank you. Welcome. Um, I'm glad you came along to join me to pray today. It's an urgent time of prayer as our global situation, not only through the virus, but through the stresses and strains that have been visible, um, thing, tensions boiling up to the surface, leadership of nations struggling. We're going to, need to pray and have our prayers informed by God's word and, and not by our own feelings but by his priorities. So let's turn to God's word now in Psalm 146, uh, which is so relevant for us today, so helpful for our prayers and our, our direction. And then we're going to read Luke, 50, Luke 9, 51 to the end and see Jesus and, and the model he is of, of what it means to live uh, for his kingdom and for his priorities. So let's let's. Read Psalm 146 first. Let me pray. Father, we pray this morning in the urgency of our situation that you would help us to know how to pray. To know what to pray for and where to put our trust. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Just make that commitment like the psalmist. I will praise the Lord my God. I will sing songs. Find a worship song, a hymn which helps you praise him. Sing to him today. Lift your soul to him. Uh, let's pray for that across the nation. And then the, here, here's the relevance. Do not put your trust in princes. Don't put your trust in rulers. Don't put your trust in prime ministers or presidents because they're mortal men who cannot save. They cannot deliver. They cannot rescue. When they die, they return to the ground and their plans come to nothing. The most, the most righteous leaders and the most corrupt the most generous and the most selfish are mortal men who come to an end one day. But blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Where is our hope? Where should our hope be today? In the Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth. And our hope should be in him because of his priorities for us. You see them listed there? Um, for the for the weak, for the outcast, for the marginalised, for the poor, for the hungry, for the newcomer to the country or the church, for the orphaned and widowed, his heart is for the weak and the and those who can't help themselves. What a contrast to our grab it and 
grow it and accumulate it culture. And he lifts up those who are bowed down. So let's bow down before him in humility, recognising our weakness and our smallness. Uh, let's recognise that we need God today. And then let's recognise that he loves the righteous and none of us is righteous by nature. Uh, righteousness is something that we are declared in God's sight through faith in Jesus Christ. When we acknowledge our sins and ask God for forgiveness in Christ, he, acknowledge, he declares the unrighteous to be righteous. Acknowledging also that he will frustrate the way of the wicked if we continue to commit to a, a, a self-serving course to a battle and divisiveness, then, then it will be frustrated. And therefore we should praise the Lord who reigns over Zion, his people, his church. Let's pray and then we'll turn to Luke. We praise you this morning, Lord. We praise you. We sing praises to you, the Lord our God. Help us, Lord, today to sing your praise, to put you in the right place in our lives. Help us not to put our trust in princes, in rulers, in prime ministers, in governments, Lord, who are only mortal, who cannot save, who cannot deliver, who cannot rescue us. Help us, Lord, to put our hope in you, the maker of heaven and earth. Help us as we do that to acknowledge your priorities as you seek to remove oppression as you maintain justice as you feed the hungry as you as you um, care for those who can't care for themselves the newcomers the 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 orphans and the widows. Lord, help us to hear your voice speak in these situations and for us all to be bowed down before you and to follow your priorities without battling, without, without blaming, without blasting each other, but bowing down before you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to the end. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the, people, when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me get back and say, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. These are tough words that we need to hear. Um, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. This is chapter 9 of the Gospel of Luke. There are 14 chapters still to go. Early on in Jesus' ministry, he set himself on a path to being treated with injustice, to being oppressed, to being hungry, to being treated as, as dirt and scum, and to do it because he loves us. 
and and because he only camped out in a wanted to camp out in a bed and breakfast on the way through Samaritan village, his disciples wanted to to destroy that village, full of vengeance, full of bitterness, full of Jesus. They've rejected you. Shall we re, shall we destroy them? And Jesus rebuked his disciples. How dare you? The time hadn't come. Jesus was going to go and die for the salvation of the world to save sinners. And his disciples want to take matters into their own hands. Don't let us pray against that spirit of destruction of others, bitterness against others, and uh, and pray for Jesus' priorities. But those priorities are not cheap. Come at a cost. He gave his life. To follow him means giving things up. Jesus uses uh, three interactions, and and the and the challenges are real, uh, but they are on a level that we've got to interpret in the context of Scripture. Jesus is not telling everybody to be homeless. Jesus is not telling everybody to neglect their families. What he is saying is, you must put me first. You must put the kingdom of God first. If you want Psalm 146 to be true, the blessing of putting your hope in the Lord, you must put me first. So let's pray. Let's pray that destructive bitterness will be replaced by a willingness to lay down our lives to lose for the good of others and so uh, in this time of calamity caused by coronavirus in this time of chaos caused by social and political upheaval in different countries let's just pray that Jesus will become our all in all. Lord, we acknowledge today the spirit and thinking of the disciples that's inside so inside us all but instinctively, that them and us mentality, the ethnic and religious differences between the Jews and Samaritans which caused, not by just by their historic relationships, but by the way that the village treated Jesus, the desire amongst the disciples to have the village destroyed. We pray, Lord, against that spirit of bitterness for historic racial and religious tension. We pray against the desire to destroy but we pray for, Lord, in their place, the, the, the attitude that would lead to Psalm 146, the end of the oppression of uh, the oppressed, the end of injustice, the end of hunger, the end of, of all the neglect of the widow and the orphan and the alien, the stranger in the land. We pray, Lord, that we be willing to put you first, to be willing to have smaller houses, less comfortable furniture. Lord, to be willing to, to put you before family in a way that blesses the family and the, ch the, the church community and our, and our neighbourhoods and our nations and the world that your kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven at the cost that you first demonstrated to us as you resolutely set yourself to go to Jerusalem to die for our sins. Lord, we pray that you would at this time give us that heart that says your kingdom comes first. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.